Really, all Occam's razor does is suppose that it is preferable to believe a theory that is more completely substantiated by evidence. That's it. Not about the number of assumptions or anything like this. All it has to do with is that a hypothesis will have premises. Okay, uh, the hypothesis, the statement itself will be in the form of a conclusion. It will have necessary premises that are either implied or made explicit. And those premises um, have reason to be substantiated by evidence. Why is that? Well, when we're making hypotheses about the objective world, our only means of knowing the objective world is through evidence. Okay, um, if we assume that there is some sort of crossing between the subjective and the objective, the sort of phenomenological uh, perspective, this that kind of throws things out of whack. But assuming the the I think the the position that's easy to wrap your head around the idea of you know, if a tree falls over in, in the forest, will it make a sound? You just say, yeah, and be done with it. The idea is that reality exists without the necessity of you observing it. Lots of people look at quantum mechanics and all that kind of stuff and say, no, maybe not, maybe not. And, and hey, maybe they're right. I don't know. I'm not going to focus on it in the context of this video. I don't think it's necessary. Because all I want to do is talk about the function and the operation of Occam's razor. So when we're considering a hypothesis that concerns itself with the objective world, um, that is to say the common reality, we recognize that one has a subjective experience of the common reality. We're good with that. But we also recognize that because it's a common reality, that two people could have exactly the same experience. And that becomes empirical data. That's the basis of empiricism. So fine. The problem later on is that you take that too far and you forget that you also a subjective thing. And I think that's what relativity theory um, began us on, that road began us on, and now quantum mechanics is, is kind of bringing the whole thing full circle. But again, just focusing on, on Occam's razor. All Occam's razor supposes is that because hypotheses about the objective world can hypothetically be substantiated by evidence. Therefore, it is more prefer preferable to believe a hypothesis that is completely substantiated by evidence by than over one that is not. Say hypoth hypothesis A um, has a set of premises, necessary premises, in order to spat off the conclusion that becomes the hypothesis. And the current data accounts for all of that. Fantastic. Okay, it fits perfectly like a glove, as opposed to another hypothesis that can account for all the data, every single last shred of data, but necessitates um, some premises that have yet been substantiated by evidence. Now, this counter hypothesis, the second one, might be true, but because it's a statement about the objective world, we have reason to suppose there hypothetically is evidence is empirical evidence about it so without that we prefer to believe the first hypothesis that is completely substantiated by the evidence a little story when i was a kindergartner a teacher handed back some math things math homework um, worksheets and she finished passing them all out and i realized i didn't get a paperback and then she was at the front of the desk, front of the classroom, in front of her little desk, whatever, uh, with the paper and said, this one didn't have a name. Who didn't get a paperback? So I shot my hand up and so did another kid. And I knew that I did this homework assignment. Kindergarten now, you know, I was, I was questioning myself. You know, maybe I forgot, I don't know. So I went up to the front. She called us up to the front. And she put the paper between me and the other kid. She said, you two figure it out. So you went to the back of the room to do something else. She didn't want to deal with it. I don't know. Bad mood that day. So we looked at it, and I, I recognized my own handwriting. I said, that, that is mine. And um, I, said, I said that, and the other kids said, no, it's mine. And we went back and forth a little bit, and then I said, you know, let's do a writing test. And the other kids like, what do you mean by that? And so by this time, a few of the kids had started to huddle around the desk looking at to see what we were going to do. And I asked for paper, and one of the little girls had extra paper. 
Little girls that age always have extra paper. Always crisp, you know, whatever. Maybe they still do. I don't know. Anyway, two pieces of paper. We both had pencils, and I said, three, two, one, go. And we wrote um, the numbers, one through ten. Why was I doing this? Do you suppose that at a kindergarten age, I could rattle off a theory of Occam's razor, like I just did minutes ago? Fuck no. But it's intuitive. We get this. And it doesn't matter how much frontal fucking lobe we get. Never mind. That's a different different video. Anyway, so we're here. Uh, we write down the numbers 1 through 10 real quick. And so what we've basically given is formalized our two hypotheses. The hypotheses, the, hy the hypothesis that it's my paper and the hypothesis that it's his. To substantiate either of these, we have to compare the premises, the idea that each one of these numbers is a different premise. How we draw the 1, how we draw the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, the 6, the 7, all the way down to 10, okay? If one of us um, shares a hypothesis that is not substantiated by the paper, then we're in trouble. So I figured that, you know, when I did this, I probably was writing fast, so I wrote as fast as I could, 1 through 10, and we compared the papers. And sure enough, on his paper, he put a little hanging thing on his sevens. He also had a, I want to say it was a closed four. I had an opened four and no little hangy dealy on my seven. His hypothesis, though might have been true in the end, was unsubstantiated. All of my premises were substantiated. And that's Occam's razor in action. And the little girl, I'll never forget it. One of the little girls patted the other kid on the back and said, Oh, you were so close. Still, still people go on about how likely something is to be true as if it's some kind of gradient. Like, oh, you were almost there. No, it was fucking your paper or fucking my paper. There is no middle or anything in between. Anyway, not, that's not to dog on women or anything, but that little girl was like, mm, yeah, whatever. You are so close. You almost made it. You just try again, right? <laughs> whatever. That's Occam's razor, okay? If both of us had premises or had written numbers in a way that did not match, then it was a matter of who made the most inconsistencies. Who has the most inconsistencies? Or if it was totally off and there were bunches of numbers, it just seemed like maybe it was from a different class. I mean, I went to uh, kindergarten with two different periods. There was a, I was the afternoon class versus the morning class. Maybe, maybe it was left over from the morning. You know, who knows? At that point, um, still, if we were only to believe it was me or the other kids, we would weigh the evidence. This is not... A foreign thing, right? We get this. We don't have to be taught about it. We don't. Have, we got it in kindergarten. Everyone got it. It's like, oh, that's not yours. See, it's not yours. It's not yours. Sorry, the little shit. He knew it wasn't his, but whatever. That's Occam's razor. So to assume that, like, okay, what does the scientific paradigm assume? Is that the criterion by which Occam's razor makes its divide? No, no, no. You have to understand what a paradigm is, and you have to know that there is evidence in existence that is not accounted for by the paradigm, okay? The problem with scientism is that it gives the paradigm a privileged precedence. It assumes more frequently than any other that um, evidence that does not substantiate its own hypothesis is somehow false. What? That's dogmatism. That's why people go around saying that atheists are religious people. I'm guessing. Because it's, it's like, it really is the same thinking. It's the same thinking. Don't do it. Occam's razor. There it is. Don't cut yourself.